I want to start off by saying I'm not a kid, so he can stop calling me a kid. I'm a man, and I will show him that in the ring. Respect me as a man. If he doesn't show want to respect me as a man, show me. I'll gain the respect in the ring. He can say that he chose me, but that's not the truth. He was forced into this fight. He did not. He, he did not want to fight me up until today. He did not want to sign a contract, so he can say what he want to say. He did not choose me. He was forced into it. You were chosen, boy. The Australian host that hosted the first press conference between George Cambosos and Devin Haney. His name is Eddie McGuire. I knew nothing about this man before he did this press conference with George Cambosis and Haney. But what I've always known is first impressions usually tell you everything you need to know about someone. I told you guys in my last video, I had never heard a boxing reporter or a host of a press conference refer to a grown black man as a boy. Eddie McGuire was the first. And usually where there is smoke, there is fire. Well, it turns out that Eddie McGuire is the Donald Sterling of football in Australia. Eddie was the president of a football team in Australia and was forced to step down due to the systemic racism that was found in his club that he was responsible for. He stepped down immediately, which further confirms that when McGuire called Devin Haney a boy, he was intentionally trying to racially offend Devin Haney and blow a dog whistle to George Cambosis and all the many other Australian races. Now, when I first played this clip in my last video of this man McGuire calling Devin Haney a boy, naturally, there were a couple of races in the comment section trying to defend McGuire and say, oh man, well, boy, he's not a racist. Boy means something else in Australia. Once again, these are racists trying to play dumb to alleviate their own guilt. There is no jurisdiction when it comes to saying something racially offensive towards a particular race. If there's a racial slur that's offensive towards Asian people, you can't say, I said it when I was in Australia, so it's not a big deal. Comments where people were trying to say, oh man, well, you have to understand Australia is different, et cetera, et cetera. They were trying to explain how different Australia is, but how come none of them shared this information about Eddie McGuire being forced to step down because he was a racist? We know what time it is. So at the end of the day, this Eddie McGuire guy is the reason why George Cambosis was more comfortable to call Devin Haney a boy on that stage when he was standing next to Eddie McGuire because he knew Eddie McGuire was a complete white supremacist, which is why Australia most likely selected Eddie McGuire as the host for the press conference in the first place. I mean, just think about it. Australia could have chose anyone to host that press conference and they elected to choose this guy. And that was right up George Cambosis' alley. Today's society being an open racist is pretty much taboo. So today they want to be racist without the actual title. So what they do is they exchange those hardcore racial slurs for the more watered down subliminal slurs like boy. You see people like George Cambosis and the Australian host, his name is Eddie McGuire, the one who also called Devin Haney a boy. They feel like using words like boy has somewhat of an insurance policy that covers you just in case anyone ever exposes you as being the white supremacist that you are. Because their justification would be to play dumb and act like because they're from Australia, they didn't understand the historical racial connotations when it comes to calling black men boys. Despite the fact that Australia has one of the worst reputations in the world when it comes to racism. By way of contrast, I want you to listen to something that Devin Haney said. Check this clip out. He does good things. I, I take that nothing away from him. I, he's, he's a good fighter. He got to this level for a reason. But we've done our studying and we know what he does bad and what he does good, when he's gonna do it and why he's gonna do it. Things that habits that he doesn't even know, we know. We've been studying, we, we know. We know what he's gonna do and why he does it. What Devin Haney just said in that clip, it sounds far more logical than anything that George Cambosis has said. A few months back, an old post from George Cambosis' wife surfaced where she was taking a picture by the pool and she says, over here with my husband, getting my N-word on. And instead of George Cambosis having a talk with his wife and telling her how offensive that is, et cetera, et cetera, 
and said he just likes the post. Now, keep in mind, she posted that before anybody in the States knew who George Cambosis was. This was way before he even came close to being in position to fight Teofimo Lopez. So now that it surfaces, once people know who George Cambosis is, George, he says right away, as soon as it starts floating around the internet and people start calling George Cambosis a racist because of the post, he responds to some people on the internet and he says, nice try, but that picture was taken like 13 years ago. As if being a racist has an expiration date. This gang behind you, <laughs> can we get a camera over here? Who, who's, this, who's this gang, mate? Oh, that's just my family. My, uh, my family came out here to, to support me and uh, help me uh, every step of the, their, their preparation. And uh, I thank them for coming out. And uh, we just look to put on a, a good fight and an entertaining fight for the fans. Who's the young fella there? They've got the young fella with the hair. That's, that's my little brother. He come loves, over here. You're he coming on TV, buddy. <laughs> come on over here. God, look at your hair. <laughs> the poo, what's the, what, do you, what's the, what do you reckon of your older brother? Today we called in the spirits of our ancestors to keep you safe on country. It means that you are welcome to everything from the tops of these trees to the roots of the earth. The smoking ceremony, great experience. It's very relaxing, I feel that peace. I can't wait to make it my destiny, my, my home on uh, June 5th. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Yeah, you can. I'm gonna send it to you. Georgie, do you agree with the cards? I thought the fight was very close. You know, from uh, what I've been told, I outlanded him, I outpunched him. You know, you saw the fight, so he had a he had a jab, but there wasn't much else. I think he might have landed one or two right hands, but that's about it. There wasn't really nothing else. So I don't feel my body does not feel like like I've been through a tour ground war like I was with a Lopez fight because. Your face looks like it. Your face looks like it.